disobedience to God's laws and God's ways. It's the willful disobedience to God's laws and God's ways. It's the rebellion to God's words and his values. It's saying that I won't do it God's way. I'm going to do it my way. That is sin. It's disobedience to God's laws and God's ways. Rebellion to his words and his values. And it's saying, I'm not going to do it God's way. I'm going to do it my way. And here's the thing about sin. We said last week, all of us, every single one of us have sinned. No exceptions. And all of us have fallen short of God's standards and values. Secondly, because of our sin, all of us stand guilty before God. Every single one of us. Again, no exceptions. Because of our sins. And thirdly, this is the good news. Jesus came into the world to save sinners. Not the righteous, but sinners. Again, that is all of us. All of us have fallen short of God's glory. All of us stand guilty before God. But the good news is that Jesus came into the world to save sinners. And that is all of us. What does the Bible tell us? Let's read Romans 3, 23 to 24. Romans 3, 23 to 24. Romans 3, 23 to 24. It says here, for all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. Okay? And again, the good news now. And all are justified freely. All are justified freely by his grace through the redemption that came by Christ Jesus. And so even though we have all fallen short of God's glory and all of us have sinned, we are justified freely and we are redeemed back to God through Christ Jesus. And if we look at Luke Luke 5, 31 to 32. Luke 5, 31 to 32. What does it say? Luke 5, 31 to 32. It says here, Jesus answered them. Okay, this is Jesus speaking. He says, it is not the healthy who need a doctor, but the sick. I have not come to call the righteous, but sinners to repentance. So Christ came into the world not to call those who think they are righteous, he came to the world to actually call sinners to repentance. And the key word there is repentance. So turning to God is not just about what we profess with our mouth. It requires a change of heart, a change of life. But that's the good news. Christ came into the world to call sinners to repentance. And that should encourage all of us. So in a sense, the condition of sin that affects every human being is very much like the condition of leprosy. And the good news is that as Jesus offered this man, this leper, hope, healing, and renewal, the same Jesus offers all of us hope, renewal, and healing in our sinful condition. He offers us hope, renewal, and healing in our sinful condition. As he says in Luke 31, in Luke we just read just now, Luke 5, 31 to 32, he says, It is not the healthy who need a doctor, but the sick. So Christ came to heal our hearts. He came to heal our lives. He came to save us. Because he understands that left untreated, very much like the condition of leprosy, the condition of sin, which is infinitely much worse, has infinitely more debilitating results in the end. So just as leprosy, when left untreated, can be a debilitated condition that disfigures the individual, that renders them unclean, that separates them from the rest of the population, sin does the very same thing to us spiritually. Just as leprosy renders the person unclean, just as it, dis it disfigures them physically, and just as it separates them from the rest of the population, think about it. Sin does the very same thing to us spiritually. In what sense? Sin causes us to be spiritually unclean before the Lord. And it separates us from God, not just in this life, but also eternally, if it's not dealt with. And just as leprosy eats away at the flesh and disfigures the body, 
the reality is that sin eats away at our souls and destroys our relationship with God. Just as leprosy eats away at the flesh and disfigures the body, the truth of the matter is that sin eats away at our souls and destroys our relationship with God. The thing about leprosy is actually this. It actually destroys the nerve endings. And so the individual with leprosy left untreated begins to lose feeling in their fingers and their toes and extremities. They lose feeling. And that's very similar to the effects of sin. When people continue in their willful rebellion towards God, when they refuse to come to God, when they insist on doing it their way, over time what happens is that very much like leprosy, it hardens the heart. It hardens the conscience. And the word of God has no impact in their lives anymore. It has no feeling in their hearts anymore. And just as leprosy brings pain and misery to its sufferers, sin does the very same thing to our lives. And all we have to do is just look at the world that we live in. All we have to do is look at the world that we live in. But again, the message this morning is a message of hope. We have to put the mirror before us to see the reality so that by the power of the Holy Spirit, we can make the change. Because just as Jesus offered the leper hope and healing in that condition, he offers everyone who comes to him hope and healing from the power and the bondage of sin. Redemption, renewal, and healing can be found in no one else and nowhere else but Jesus. You see, we read here that the leper came to Jesus. He did what? He actually came to Jesus in verse 2. He says, a man with leprosy came and knelt before him and said, Lord, if you are willing, you can make me clean. Meaning that the leper left the leper colony and what came to Christ. All right. But before he came to Jesus, what happened? His condition must have seemed hopeless. The world must have given up on the leper and isolated him. And he was an outcast. But here's the thing. The only reason why his condition changed. The only reason why he was transformed, the only reason why the leper received healing is because he had not given up on God. And more importantly, God had not given up on him. He had not given up on God. And God had not given up on him. Before he came to Christ, he must have thought his condition was hopeless. The one who had given up on him was an outcast. Remember, visualize him for a second. Visualize the worst case scenario. The limbs are falling off. The limbs are deformed. He has skin lesions. Loss of tissue. It must have seemed like an impossible or hopeless situation. But yet in that condition, the leper took his eyes of how he looked. He saw Jesus. And he believed that if he comes to Jesus, his condition would be changed. He would be healed physically and completely. So he had not given up on God and God had not given up on him. And so we read in Matthew 8 verse 3 that Jesus touched this man and healed him. And that touch again is the powerful revelation of the heart of Jesus and the character of God. It was unthinkable for a Jewish person to be in close contact with someone who is deemed unclean. And yet here we have, in the full view of everybody, Jesus actually reached out his hand and touched this man. And the interesting thing is that Jesus didn't have to touch him to heal him. Christ didn't have to touch this man to heal him. He actually didn't have to touch this man to heal him. He could have just said a word, as he did in other instances in the, in the Gospels, Christ could have said a word, and the man would have been healed instantly. Christ didn't have to say a word. But Christ instead chose to touch this man, and this speaks volumes. It tells us that this touch was intentional. 
Christ touched this man, his touch was intentional, and his touch demonstrates the heart of Christ. It demonstrates the love of Jesus, his compassion, not only for the 